So in this video, we're diving into rhythm because a question I get so often from my students is how do I have the right rhythm for me individually as a golfer and does it even matter? So let's get into that straight away. Now let's get into that second question first. Does rhythm even matter? Yes and no. Depends on what type of golf swing you have. So rhythm is something you really need to prioritize on the golf course if you're a golfer who has a lot of timing elements in their golf swing. So let's say you're a golfer who plays with more of an open face and you use a lot of hand rotation through the shot. If you're one of them golfers, well, I would definitely recommend to change that technique. But if you are, rhythm would be very, very beneficial. If you have timing elements in general in your golf swing, maybe it's early extension, maybe you're struggling with your levels of rotation, having a smooth rhythm will help you massively. Because what a smooth rhythm will do for you, for those golfers, it will keep everything running smoothly. So that'll be you when, let's say you go out and hit one really hard. You have like a par five you wanna to get to in two, and you go and absolutely smack it. So you really go really, really hard, and you notice that that ball's gone absolutely everywhere. It's gone way right, way left. That's because you've got lots of big timing elements in your golf swing. It's also a good exposure of where your golf swing is at. If you go out on really hard and you spray it, odds on you've got some big timing elements in your golf swing. So this is gonna be the vast majority of you watching this video. You're gonna have timing elements in your golf swing where you need to have good rhythm out on the golf course. Now, on an easy sense to view this, view your swing on a percentage scale. 100% is going as hard as you can, dial it down to 70%. That would be ideal. I think if you ask more tour players, they will be more at around a 70%. Some of them will be a lot faster, but we'll talk about some of them in a minute. So when you're going out and let's say onto the golf course, 70%, but let's say you're on the driving range, have a very small period of time in your practice to this. So this will be where maybe at the beginning of your practice session, feel those nice smooth swings, 70%, and just notice what happens to the golf ball. Now you can do a little drill, because when people do normally get, let's say a little bit fast in their rhythm or their tempo, they'll normally do that from the top of the backswing in transition. So what I would like to see some players do if you're gonna practice this, maybe you've got a big problem with your rhythm being too quick, have the stop at the top drill. So get to the top, stop for a second or two, and then swing and hit the shot. Forces you to be in good sequence with arms and body also. It's a good general drill. So if you really struggle, that's a good drill to do but don't go and practice this for a very long period of time on just focusing on rhythm. Probably one of the worst things I hear from golfers who are practicing on the driving range, who have got big glaring things wrong with their golf swing, they prioritize too much about their rhythm. So what that's ultimately doing is it's keeping your swing in a state where it's staying the exact same. Rhythm's great for the golf course to, like we said, to work with what you've got, but you need to prioritize your range time some more productive things to make you better. That's working on your technique. That little bit of time, maybe even just before you go play a round of golf is when you need to work a little bit on your rhythm. Don't dedicate a lot of time for it. It's a golf course thing. So to have a faster rhythm, generally you would need less timing elements in your golf swing. So you would need less, let's say for our example before we had for the slower rhythm, smoother, let's say the open club face player with a lot of hand rotation, maybe a golfer who has a lot of early extension in the golf swing, just general things you wanna fix. Wouldn't be so much for you. You would need the opposite of that. You would need to be someone who stays in their posture very, very well. You would need to be someone who really rotates really nicely through the golf ball, has that nice stable club face everything is really quite solid. So this is where we have people on tour like Dustin Johnson, for example. I mean, he's got a very kind of almost unattainable golf swing with the way he moves, but he would have very little timing element in there. So he can go at that pretty hard and he'll still be able to hit a good golf shot. Now, even for like myself, I have to be a little bit careful with my rhythm out in the golf course. I'm luckily in a place now where I can go a little bit harder and a little bit faster rhythm and still hit the ball pretty much where I want to, and it will of course go a little bit further because there'll be a little bit more speed behind it. But if I'm not necessarily swinging well on a day, you sure bet I'm not gonna be going very hard at it. I'm gonna be 70%ing it. So that nice swing, if I'm having one of those days where we can all relate to our swing doesn't feel right, I have a few timing elements in my golf swing that I try to get rid of. So I would be thinking of someone like Louis Eustazen, for example, and then I would try to replicate that tempo. But even look at those guys. Look at the guys that have that really smooth rhythm. Louis Eustazen. Look at Ernie Els. 
you'll see a lot of those movements that are very timing orientated going through the shot. I used to work with someone who had a very, very smooth rhythm. He used to play on the European tour for quite a long time. One of the, funnily enough, one of the longest hitters every year that he was out on tour for. Extremely timing orientated goal swing. Very open face, lots of hand rotation going through the shot, but incredibly consistent. And he had the smoothest rhythm I've ever seen in person. Absolutely unbelievable rhythm. Now, his golf swing, for example, absolutely reliant on it. I would want my players to have a swing where they're not bogged down by having one specific rhythm. If they want to have a smoother swing, they can go about that. But if they want to make the most of it and really go at one, have a faster rhythm, they can absolutely go about doing that because I want them to have a more, let's say, or a less timing based golf swing. So here's a little insight to rhythm. It's not just swing smooth for everyone. You can have a faster rhythm, but you've got to make sure that your swing suits it. Now, a lot of times it can come into someone's type of personality. If you're more laid back, you're generally gonna have more of a smoother rhythm. If you're more, you know, all over the place, you're generally gonna have a faster rhythm. Look at someone like Ian Poulter, for example. Certainly not a laid back guy. Very, very quick rhythm. And again, Ernie Els, extremely laid back, very smooth rhythm. So there is that element to it. There's not really much substance behind that saying, is there? It's very kind of like a trust me bro type of saying. We want to, you know, a, a little bit of more data backing it up, and especially when it comes to variables, your timing elements between the different styles of rhythm is a lot more substance to go by and trust. So if you enjoyed this video, click that like button if you want more golf instruction just like this. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So Make sure your rhythm is a little bit more matching where your golf swing is in its technical sense right now.